global climate is changing. That's not, not debatable. Uh, through combined natural variability and anthropogenic, anthropogenic stressors, i.e., man made uh, uh, stressors. Okay, there's natural variability, for example, like El Nino cycles, uh, et cetera, and other climate variability that we've seen forever. It's going to keep going. We have nothing to do with that. But we do have a lot to do with global warming. And, and the scientific community is almost unanimous in, in stating that we have a role to play and are playing a role in climate change and global warming. Okay? And in fact, as an aside, I, I also uh, uh, I'm, I used to be scientific director of something called the Metcalf Institute at the University of Rhode Island, which is trying to teach journalists how to report science. And um, uh, it's not a he said, she said. If 99.9% .9 of us say something and 0.1% of us say something else, we don't give equal weight to that 0.1%. It's very, very straightforward. And, uh, and then the journalists are, are saying to me, well, what, what, how do I know? that 0.1% that, that is not some Einstein out there that has all the answers and no one else did. And I simply tell them you've got two choices. You can either educate yourself in the science of what we do, which is really hard, or, and or follow the money. Who, who's funding who? Okay, if you, if you see a, a peer-reviewed scientist uh, getting funding through the National Science Foundation, for example, or NOAA, or other government agencies, that is a decades-old tested peer review process. To get, to get funded in that, in this business, you have to go through a significant amount of hurdles to do that. And the peer review process is, is, is a, is a well-tested one. Versus being funded by, by a corporation that may have an agenda for providing information about climate change. We have two fundamental responses to, to a climate that's changing. One, we adapt. And by adaptation here, I mean that, that the uh, change is inevitable. No matter what we do, it's going to happen. Okay? And, and in this case, I'll tell you that if we stop all of our anthropogenic greenhouse gases, uh, greenhouse gas emissions today, we still have decades worth of warming in the pipeline. It's not going to change. Okay, so we have to adapt to a warming climate. The other other response is, is to mitigate against that that inevitable. So we we can we can slow the inevitable down. Okay, and we don't want to be always adapting. That's a bad place to be. So the mitigating and adapting have to be worked together in concert. The policies have to be put in place to enable that. And the uh, incentives for people to perform this way have to be put in place by, by insurance and reinsurance policies, for example. And to implement any of this, you have to recognize that no one person or one group of people have the answers. Uh, I, as a science, natural scientist, need to be co cognizant of the societal sciences and the economics and, and also the policy side of things and vice versa. So we have to create what I call knowledge partnerships to, to attack this problem and to, and to implement uh, solutions for it.